This is a report done by Natalie Monkey of Konstantin Sikovsky. And she would be saying it, except for she's sick, and I decided to say it for her. This is Konstantin when he was... Konstantin Sikovsky was born on September 17th, 1857 in Kaluga, Russia. And that red dot is where he is. When he was 10, Konstantin got scarlet fever, which made him mostly deaf, which must really suck. Because he was deaf, he was not allowed to go to school, so he taught himself by reading books. This is the book that Constantine probably read when he was younger. He spent most of his time in homeschool researching books about mathematics, physics, and astronomy. When Constantine fell behind in his studies, he spent three years studying at the Moscow Library. This is the Moscow Library, and it looks pretty big. He came to believe that colonizing space would bring the perfect human race. He believed in the cosmos developing a superior species and living forever. Which reminds me of Star Wars because they live in space. They have the force, which is pretty freaking awesome. And, and he wants to live forever in like all the movies because he's afraid of death. Being inspired by the fiction of Jules Verne and the newly built Eiffel Tower, he dreamed up the space elevator. And this is probably what he imagined in his head. This is also what he probably imagined in his head. He was overworked, going hungry, and creating unusual ideas. Even though he was smart, his dad was worried about his health and fantasies. Believing it would hurt his ability to pro provide a living, so his dad made him come home. While he was at home, he passed the teacher's exam, became a teacher, and got married to Varva Sokolovia, which is a lot like Star Wars also. He turned his apartment into Russia's first aerodynamic laboratory. This is where Russia's first wind tunnel was built. This is probably what it looks like. This is probably what it looks like. As he did his teaching job, he also spent much time doing scientific research, specifically on the metal-clad airship. The Star Destroyer! Dun, dun, dun! Just kidding. Here's the real design. Behold the blimp, the ancestor of the mighty Star Destroyer. These are his famous flight formulas. Change in the rocket speed, exhaust velocity of the engine, initial and final mass of the rocket. But Russia wasn't so excited about the idea of the metal-clad airship which is why it took so many years to make it happen. People had a hard time believing what Constantine said because of his unpopular ideas of inhabiting space and, created, and creating a superior race with superpowers, which is also a lot like Star Wars because, yeah, because of the Jedi Council. <laughs> Constantine got discouraged and walked away from space travel studies for a while and focused on w helping young hunger problems in Russia during the war. And that's a picture of... Yeah. In 1903, his most important work was published, Exploration of Outer Space by Means of Rocket Devices. However, people at the time didn't get very excited about it. In 1911, he published the second part of the work, Exploration of Outer Space by Means of Rocket Devices. This time it was a smashing hit, 
and everybody loved it, so he was very happy. Constantine received the honor of being considered the father of spaceflight, and this is a picture of him again. In 1926 through 1929, Sokov Sokovsky solved the practical problem regarding the role played by rocket fuel in getting to escape velocity and leaving the Earth. In 1929, Sokovsky proposed the construction of multi-stage rockets in his book Space Rocket Trains. In summary, he was the first to champion the idea of diversity of life in the universe. And then this is a bit, another picture of the new Star Wars movie. He was the first advocate of human space exploration. And here's the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> Sadly, he never built a rocket and thought it maybe it would never happen. <laughs> And that's a frowny face. Famous Sokolsky quotes. Man must at all costs overcome the Earth's gravity and have in reserve the space or at least the solar system. Men are weak now and yet they transform the Earth's surface. In millions of years their might will increase to the extent that they will change the surface of the Earth and its oceans, the atmosphere, and themselves. And then these were the resources that we used. Star Wars, Wikipedia, YouTube, and my brain, my brother's brain, and my mom's brain too. In my face. And that's the end.